The South Carolina class battleships, launched in 1908, were America's first all big gun dreadnoughts, with a significant large calibre primary armament and smaller guns making up secondary armament. Inspired by HMS Dreadnought, launched in 1906, they were still revolutionary in one way in particular. They had super firing turrets, that is, main gun turrets mounted behind and above other turrets, allowing the ships to bring their full main armament to bear on one side of the vessel. This allowed the class to match the broadside of a ship like HMS Dreadnought, but in a lighter and smaller ship. The trade-off was, of course, less guns overall. Dreadnought could engage targets on both port and starboard with more firepower. But as the 20th century progressed, and the range of naval engagements began to increase, and the polarity, that is, two opposing fleets in distinct formations staying a distance apart, as opposed to the chaotic melee in the Age of Sail, this was an advantage that was beginning to lose relevance. HMS Neptune, launched the year after South Carolina, was the first British battleship fitted with super-firing guns, and the trend would continue until battleships were pressed out of service. In the early 1900s, effective torpedo protection was in its infancy. Therefore, torpedoes and underwater damage were an enormous threat to even the largest ships. In 1904, the flagship of the Russian Far East fleet, Petropavlovsk, sank in only two minutes after striking a single mine, with 70 survivors out of nearly 700 crew. This drove a desire amongst US and British ship designers to fit ships with guns that could engage and destroy ships before they got within torpedo range. There was also the desire to outrange the opponent's big gun ships, engaging them before their own guns were in effective range. The smaller, rapid-firing secondary armament would engage faster but poorly protected destroyers and torpedo boats. This arms race would continue until the 1920s, when the Washington Naval Treaty attempted to put a stop to the threatening escalation of naval power but this would only prove to be a temporary deterrent. A key individual in the development of American battleships was Rear Admiral Washington L. Capps. He was responsible for the super-firing turret design, but also for what would later be known as the all-or-nothing armoured protection scheme that would be a hallmark of American battleship design for years to come. Capps realised that ships were becoming very powerful, and in order to have a chance of stopping their shells, armour protection would have to be very strong. To protect a ship from bow to stern with a level of protection required to neutralise battleship primary armament would make the ship incredibly heavy. But Caps also realised that lightly armouring the bow and stern would only serve to activate the fuses of those shells. He decided that minimal protection for the hull either side of the central portion of the ship's length would save weight and prevent unnecessary damage in the event of a large shell detonation. The armour scheme had flaws, however. Caps had protected South Carolina against close-range engagements, shell striking the ships horizontally would be stopped by the belt. Protection for plunging fire at long range, however, was weak. Shells that fell from above could puncture the relatively thin decks and penetrate deep into the bowels of the ship. This wasn't yet a fatal problem, as the effective range of naval guns at the time made plunging fire relatively rare, but it would become increasingly prevalent in the coming decades. The placement of the turrets took up space previously used for machinery, Caps got around this by removing bulkheads along the ship's centre line and placing machinery there, and save weight by cutting down the aft of the ship. The class also introduced lattice masts, seen on many early US capital ships, intended to allow spotters to observe the fall of long-range fire. Power was supplied by a pair of triple expansion engines, allowing the South Carolina to reach 18.5 knots. Primary armament came in the form of eight 12-inch 45 caliber Mark V guns in eight twin turrets. Designed in 1903, they fired a 400 kg shell at a muzzle velocity of 823 meters per second to a range of 18.3 kilometers, and were capable of penetrating 300 mm of armor at 8 kilometers. Secondary armament consisted of 22 3 inch 50 caliber guns, 11 per side, and a few 3 pounder Hotchkiss guns to deal with faster, smaller ships. Rapid fire, quick firing 1 pounder guns, the world's first auto cannon, were also mounted to combat fast attack craft. Later versions of this gun would become the first anti-aircraft autocannons. The ships were also armed with underwater 21-inch torpedo tubes. The main armour belt was 254mm thick, the turret front armour 305, the sides 203, and the barbettes 254mm. The top deck was protected by an inch of armour, and the roof of the magazines was protected by a further 51mm of steel. South Carolina was laid down on the 18th of December 1906, and her sister Michigan the day before. 
They were launched in 1908 and commissioned in early 1910. Both ships took part in various training cruises, sailing many thousands of miles in the years before, during and after the First World War. When the United States joined the war in 1917, both ships escorted convoys in the Atlantic and sorted along the east coast of America, but did not take part in combat. At the conclusion of hostilities, both ships ferried US servicemen back home. South Carolina's career was largely uneventful, aside from delivering troops to Haiti in January 1914 during a period of political unrest. Both ships delivered troops during the Vera Cruz occupation in Mexico in November, when tensions between the countries ran high after America's sailors were arrested for entering areas off limits to them. Michigan's career was also quiet, although it was marked by two unfortunate incidents. In 1916, deposits of copper from the 12-inch shells building up inside the guns caused a premature shell detonation, blowing off one of the barrels. In January 1918, in heavy seas off Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, a four-lattice mast buckled under the strain of the rolling waves, killing six sailors and injuring 13. By the 1920s, the ships were showing their age. With the signing of the Washington Naval Treaty in February 1922 to stop the escalating naval arms race, many obsolete ships, including the South Carolina class, were removed from service. In 1923, South Carolina was used as a testbed for anti-torpedo bulges. Along with Michigan, she was scrapped in 1924. She was an important stepping stone on the path to modern battleship design, and her influence on later American and global warships was sizable. <laughs>